Big rip shot on net. Save. Goal. Welcome everybody to Manchester Memorial High School here in Manchester, New Hampshire. We are getting set for the Division I Boys Championship game here. I'm Corey Munster Tiger, joined in the booth by Bill Klein. We're excited about today's, af uh, excuse me, this afternoon's action. Should be a phenomenal game against two undefeated teams here. The Bulldogs coming in at 14-0-2 from Bedford and then the Exeter Blue Hawks coming in at 13-0-3. Phenomenal records. These two teams, Bill, seem to have been on a collision course since day one. What do you expect this afternoon? I'll tell you, uh, I talked to both coaches before the game and they're looking at this like this could be one of the best soccer matches in the history of uh, boys soccer here in New Hampshire. Uh, they didn't play in the regular season and that's why neither of them probably have a loss. Could have been a tie, but they're coming in as a one and a number two seed. Exeter having beaten Keene, which broke the perfect bracket. Bedford one nothing over Hanover. Exeter three to two over Keene earlier this week. Uh, both coaches talked about the fact that the players on both teams, a lot of them know each other. Some of them play each other, play with each other on the same teams. And uh, they are all expecting a great match, and uh, we've got three officials today. I spoke with them as well. Two of the three I've known, and they are outstanding officials. I think this is going to be a beautiful thing. Viewers right now are seeing the bracket there. Again, the Bedford Bulldogs beat Pinkerton, that 1-8 matchup, to advance to the semifinal round. They were able to get past Hanover 1-0 in those semifinals to reach the finals here today. Exeter, as you see, number two seed coming in, quite obviously, with that 13-0-3 record. Uh, they were able to get past Timberlane early on and then beat Portsmouth in that quarterfinal round. Excuse me, semi quarterfinal round. And then semifinals, they were able to overcome Keene 4-3 to reach today's final. One of the unique things about the uh, semifinal that uh, Bedford played was that last roughly 20 minutes of the game, it was 10 versus 11. Corey, I know you were not here to join us, unfortunately. However, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, it, it was amazing uh, to see that game, which was just that one goal, like you just said, Corey, but could have been either direction the other way for in the beginning. But basically, Bedford dominated most of that. This is not, I don't think we're going to see one team dominate this. We're going to see a lot of skilled play all over the field, defensive and attacking, and the goalkeepers are both very strong at each end. Did hear a little bit more about that game, and uh, I understood there were two uh, crossbar hits from the Bulldogs very early in that game. It, plus, I, a, It was like four seconds apart. <laughs> and, uh, that. and and they uh, basically had the field tilted in their offensive direction the entire game, yet still only squeaked out with a one-goal victory. So that's what playoff soccer is, that, that fluke goal here and there can obviously turn the tides. Tonight we have some wind, we have some sun, some challenges for the goalie that's going to be down to our right-hand side as they look back into the sun. So, so it is a beautiful day, but somewhat chilly. 
bright blue sky for now, and that sun is going to set over to our left. So we may have some challenges with, uh, with, with getting the numbers right as we're, we're uh, kind of looking into the sun and looking down onto the field, just trying to, to narrate the action. So please bear with us as we get through some of these challenges until the sun sets. Especially the sun, not just for us, but for the goalkeeper to our right. Whoever's defending going from uh, right to left, that's going to that's gonna be tough. Uh, definitely in the first half, I don't know how quickly that ball, that, that, that ball in the sky is going to settle down. But uh, hey, quick quick note on the, the, the history here. Exeter uh, has had nine appearances in the finals. And that goes back during most of the time, Jimmy Tufts, who coached the current uh, staff of the Exeter team. They both played for him ex at Exeter. Nine appearances, five wins. Bedford, five appearances, three wins. And those were all, I believe, under Stu Pepper. Not too shabby of a record there in the finals, 60%. I'd say that's pretty strong. Very strong. And by the way, you know, we've talked a couple times about size of school differences when we played Hanover. Hanover's one of, BG and Hanover are much smaller. They petitioned to move up from a lower division to play up. And their schools are, I think it's more than half of the population or student body that Bedford has. Pinkerton, very large. Exeter and us are almost the same size. Size can make a difference here, and obviously these two strong teams have benefited from solid selection throughout their student body. We'll go through the starting lineups here as they're being announced here in the stadium. For the Bulldogs, we'll have Derek Walensky in goal. The senior goalkeeper will get the nod today as he has over the last few playoff games. Colin Johnson, Eli Kaplow, Evan Hoey, Tavis Wallace, Caden Santer, Ali Mirza, Gabe Teixeira, Jake Belecki, Ethan Benjamin, and Logan Tennant will round out the Bulldogs starting lineup for Coach Pepper. For the Blue Hawks, Coach Curran will have Alex Fua in the cage, Cam LaCouture, Aiden Powers, Cooper Vitti, Sean Howe, Alan Barreto, Jude Keener, Will Mannix, Jack Blythe, Finn Topitzer, and Marshall Lazowitz will be taking the pitch for Coach Curran. It's been eight years since Exeter was in the finals. That was uh, 2016, and they prevailed with a 5-0 score against Manchester Memorial. That's also significant because that's where we're playing here at Manchester Memorial's field. And they haven't been in the playoffs since then either. Bedford, on the other hand, gave us one of the most outstanding finals last year, beating Hanover four to nothing to win the 2023 crown. And that was one heck of a game in spite of the score. It was closer than that. It was 0-0, uh, zero, zero, I think, until, what, like right after the second half started? So I'm pretty sure you're right. We were here. Yeah. Not here, we were actually down in Stellas, which is being, they're tearing that field up, repairing it right now. Absolutely, and unfortunately, you know, the Bulldogs didn't really have high expectations at the start of last season. It kind of snuck up on some people as those playoffs developed, and they got to the championship, and then eventually won. As they were the sixth seed, I thank you for, for sharing that with me right now. Yeah, Corey, as, uh, I, I, I was just looking at that. Sixth seed, Exeter was 12 last year. They got knocked out early. Uh, Bedford obviously went from six, beat the top two teams, one and two. We'll take a quick timeout for the National Anthem and join you for some boys soccer action in just a moment.
Welcome back, everybody. Again, we're just about ready for kickoff here for this Boys Division I Soccer Championship game here from Manchester Memorial, the home of the Crusaders. Very gracious of them to host today's final where the Bedford Bulldogs, the number one seed, will be playing against the Exeter Blue Hawks, the number two seed. Again, I'm Corey Munster Tiger here, joined by Bill Klein. Bill, any other thoughts here as we get ready for kickoff? I, I, have, I have one wish, and that's the game is won in regulation time. <laughs> uh, overtime wouldn't be bad, but I don't want to see this end in penalty kicks. You know, that's what we saw the Bedford uh, girls go out of the tournament with. That's a hard way to end a season, and that was one of two of the girls' games in the uh, quarterfinals quarter excuse me, that uh, ended up being only one of the top four seats went on tonight. Uh, Exeter or this afternoon, excuse me. <laughs> Exeter, BG, B, BG, what am I doing? I'm exhausted. Bedford, <laughs> That's, I just want a good clean game and uh, I imagine this probably will be a game to remember, I hope, from start to finish, Corey. I certainly imagine, again, two, two very experienced teams here. The Bulldogs have a roster of 12 seniors, seven juniors, five sophomores and just one freshman on the Blue Hawks side. They have 13 seniors, again, very experienced squad, seven juniors and three sophomores. We are getting, and there it is, we are underway. The Bulldogs kick it off, send it deep by Eli Kaplow from that back line center back position. Balecki down this left wing to Teixeira. We do have a radio broadcast and a TV broadcast, so apologies for our video viewers here i'm going to be a little bit more chatty as we try to fill in for our radio fans near side out of bounds so the blue hawks will have a throw in exeter has a uh, prolific score one of the top scorers in the state uh, that would be max Corey, do you have max's number there on your roster was that will mannix number 17 will mannix i'm sorry mannix yes will mannix number 17 Phenomenal player, and again, pro likely one of those players that these guys are seeing throughout the club ranks and playing with in the non-fall seasons. Winter, spring, and then of course, summer ball as they go to these tournaments. Team players are gonna be feeling each other out, a foul there on that far side, nice sportsmanship by the Blue Hawks. Speaking of feeling them out, that's exactly what we just saw. The Absolutely. Bit of contact there. And Official with the three-man system, the official's right there on top of the play. Good signaling, good loud whistle I could hear from up here. Cooper Vitti with the foul, and now Kaplow sends the ball deep, trying to get it into the box. He finds it through somehow. And again, we're having trouble seeing, I believe that's Balecki right along that goal line. Takes a little bit of a oh. hit, but no foul, and it yields a goal kick for the Blue Hawks as they were making some noise down there deep in the offensive end. Watching some of these games, the way the referees have uh, drawn a line as to what they're going to allow, how much uh, physical play, and obviously if the players are playing and uh, respecting each other, even if it's hard play and it's even, they tend to let it go. That's what we saw in the, uh, the semifinal. We'll have a foul here at midfield as Ethan Benjamin settled under it. He was fouled by Alan Barreto on the ahead attempt, so Kaplow will send another ball into that penalty area. Our opponents have tended to play us very physically. I think that's part of their intent that they feel that they need to because our skill level on the average is better than most teams. Kaplow sends one in near the penalty spot, headed around. I think Benjamin there trying to pull it down and now it will be cleared out by the Blue Hawks. First Forward to Mannix. Mannix gets fouled. He'll, trying to slow him down. CJ Johnson coming back. That was a good foul. Yeah, First time that uh, Exeter had had that run, and uh, he, he stopped him. If I was a coach, I'd say, nice job. Gives your defense a chance to, to reset. Ball sent deep by the Blue Hawks. They batted around just outside the penalty area as that Sean Howe. He runs onto it now, and Balecki is fouled. So the Bulldogs will clear it out deep in their left back position, Kaplow positions it, surveys the field, and restarts rather quickly as Santer comes for it. Caden Santer. That's Teixeira. 
a little Looking too to heavy. Forward to Mirza. Mirza, a phenomenal goal scorer, the junior forward. Again, I've said this all season long, just always in the right place at the right time. I don't have the stats in front of me, but I can't imagine anybody has any more goals than Ali Mirza for these, this Bulldogs team for this season. I think actually he's number two, believe Ooh, it or not. Okay. Uh, tell me I'm wrong and, and try, tell me who it is. I remember who, <laughs> who, who it is, Corey. One of the things that's difficult to do is uh, stats and uh, keep track of things. And some coaches are very good about uh, keeping in touch with the news outlets and whatnot. Ball sent forward by Wallace. Gets back onto it. Tavis Wallace, the senior midfielder for the Bulldogs, and now onto it. The Blue Hawks. Barreto sends it into midfield. And that gets tipped out of bounds by Keener. I think one of the things is we, we've had so many players score, Corey, uh, game after game. You know, we've had a number of high scoring games. And uh, the. Uh, from what I understand, Exeter does not have as broad a, a scoring attack as what Bedford does in terms of all the different players that are putting the ball in the back of the net. Johnson there earned a foul. The Bulldogs restarted. Here's Teixeira. Teixeira, interesting story too. Again, he missed the, uh, the quarterfinal game, was able to play some in that semifinal game, but uh, an injury just before that quarterfinal game had him on the sidelines. I, I believe it was a sprained ankle and he was hobbled and Coach Pepper made the right decision to limit his minutes even in this last semifinal game to look forward a little bit. And, you know, again, not looking past Hanover, but at least being smart about a player recovering from an injury. What we just saw was uh, the ball played forward by Bedford and then backwards across the field, changed the field, then down the right-hand side. I counted, I think, 10 consecutive touches. And then the ball went out of bounds. And it's still Bedford control over there until now. Deep on that far right wing sideline across the field from where we are high in the booth. Now Keener has a chance for the Blue Hawks. He brings it out. The Bulldogs defense does a nice job to catch back up to it. Great challenge. Oops. We had a foul there. I believe After. Benjamin caught the, the foot of Cooper Vitti. So the Blue Hawks will have a free kick. About halfway in between midfield and the penalty area, so be a decent ball. This is to the top right of Walensky's cage. Ball sent in. Evan Hoey gets a hip on it, deflects it forward, Gabe. and now Teixeira gets quick, it. Quick restart. To gets fouled and to starts his buddy it Ali. Yeah, unfortunately, like the official felt like the ball was still moving, so he calls them back, and Exeter has a chance to regroup on the defensive side. To Shara, footwork here, but it does trickle out of bounds. It'll be a, a Blue Hawks throw, near side, defensive side for the Blue Hawks. Tennant now kicks it back over his head. Batted around here near midfield and now sent forward for the Blue Hawks. Kaplow volleys it out and now Johnson tries to bring it down in the midfield. Switches fields, but the Blue Hawks Intercept that pass ahead for Barreto. Barreto dispossessed. Kaplow sends it forward for Centaire. Ali a little slow getting back there. The ball that was played by uh, Teixeira. Couldn't get to it. They're, they're the two that click more than probably any other two players on the Bedford side. Wallace sends one in. Here's Teixeira. Left wing. Cuts it back. Oh. Fires too high. Teixeira down to our left side, firing into the sun. Corey, the good Beautiful thing about ball that is there by Wallace. You mentioned he's coming off that sprained ankle. He just made a great run and got a shot off. Part of, part of his issue with that has been the stability of, of two feet. That sprained ankle is still a little tough. Yeah, and that was his left foot as he stabbed that left foot to cut back to his right, but then got a solid shot off with that right foot. Unfortunately... For the Bulldogs, it was a bit high. Now, Benjamin dispossesses. Ali. Mirza down that right wing. We have Fiddles a with it right there by the goal line. Nope. 
And the far side official didn't want to make a call too early, was relying on the head official in the center of the field, and it is a goal kick. Yeah, there was a bit of a delay there, but that's not, not, that's not a bad thing. Corey. No, yeah, exactly. That's you want them to get the call Eye right. Contact and getting it right. Yep, absolutely. Here, Santer steps into the passing lane. Wallace will push forward. Heavy touch. Tapped away. Marshall Lazowitz. He's forward. Kaplo steps in beautifully to pick that off. Johnson settles and plays back to Tennant. The Bulldogs will build from the back? Maybe not. Al Al Kaplo sends it forward. Big benefit with this three-man system that we've got in the in the games when we get into the tournament like this and this depth is the fact that you've got a linesman that's in position hopefully perfectly for every offside call. Powers with the foul there on Johnson so the Bulldogs restart quickly and yes it, you're referring to uh, if folks have not followed this all along for most games throughout the season they are just a two-man officiating crew so therefore they stay in position to call offside for both teams throughout the game. Throw in here with the opportunity. Pops through. Header. Now Mirza with an opportunity. Ooh, he gets fouled. No, no call. Oh, the fans wow. are not happy with Ooh. that. Pretty tough push from behind on Mirza. No call there. And will be a goal kick for the Blue Hawks. So as I was mentioning, mostly these two-man officiating crews, but here we do have that third official that is roving throughout the middle as well as the two linesmen in position to call these offside. We have a two-man officiating crew, we have a two-man production crew. We've got Bill Jennings here on the camera, Andrew Fenn back at the studio. And I don't know if we've, if he's gonna be doing any replays during this game. I know we can't see it. We also have Harry Kozlowski producing the radio for us, so thank oh, you, that's Harry. Right. That's right. Little tip through there. Doesn't make a connection to Shero. Was trying a little misdirection play there. And now here near sideline, Will Mannix sends it into the middle. Good Benjamin defense. steps through. Good defense backs there. Getting back onto it, Mannix. A little back heel. Looking to connect with Howe. But the Bulldogs come away with it. Santer gets out to his left. Keeps it inbounds along that left sideline. Now plays forward for Mirza. Mirza delays. Now Johnson will range down the near side left wing. Nice run. Tries to make that centering pass. Oh, it yep. gets deflected out, and I believe that'll be Coming. a throw. Yeah, it almost, almost made it to the corner, Corey. Cor Cor Corey will have to put a rope on you and let you uh, rappel down here a little bit <laughs> when, when you need to to see the field. Very, very difficult up here. It's a beautiful, the whole stadium is nice, but the view out of here is not good and Bill Jennings is shaking his head going oh my gosh with the sun at this time of day to have a match it's it's absolutely not ideal I, we're all going to have uh, migraine headaches before we leave the Bulldogs with a yeah I mean I, we're working on them already my gosh the Bulldogs with a throw in there trying to connect with Mirza they fire it across but it comes out no shots on goal yet we had the one shot by uh Gabe Tixera, however, that went way up over the crossbar. Alex Fua, the goalkeeper for the Blue Hawks, is able to. Now Mannix tries to pop it ahead for himself. And Hoey comes across from his right back position and pops it First over the, the goal game. line. And yeah, now the Blue Hawks will have a corner kick down to our right. Number 17, Will Mannix. The senior will take it. Looks like he'll take a left-footed in-swinger down to our right. As Wilensky will man the cage. The Bulldogs defense get ahead on it and tap it out. Now Teixeira has some room. He's going to wait slowly. On now left. Out for Santer making a run down the left wing. He'll settle things down and keep possession for the Bulldogs. Johnson now. Tips it wide Will for Belecki. We see Belecki. this go to the right side of the field. They're probably going to change it up here. Benjamin in the middle. Settles. Belecki again. One touch pass gets picked. And now Mannix touches it into the middle for Keener. Keener cuts it back. Tries the right wing. But Belecki steps up. Nice job by Belecki defending there in the perfect position to uh, prevent that attack from 
getting any further downfield. That was still uh, 35 yards out that they got that time before Bedford defenders were able to stop it. And by the way, uh, both coaches said that they're not planning to do anything different than they have all season. They're not going to mark any of these superstars, uh, whether it's Mannix or Mirza, either end. They feel that uh, they got to continue to play their games, be confident, be relaxed, and just do their thing. That's a quote from both coaches. Yeah, I mean, well, honestly, if you've gotten uh, this far with an undefeated season, I'm not sure you would want to do anything different. Yes, a superstar in the lineup might change how you think about things, but maybe not your strategy, not your approach. So I, I agree with their, their both of their ideas here. Corey, at a little higher level soccer, when you go to college and, and the pro stuff, and uh, Sean Diaz was, was on his phone looking at a game and Manchester United and whatnot, looking at scores right, right before the match. I got a kick out of that. Uh, but in those games, they will change their tactics when they're going up against teams that have some players that have some unbelievable skills like that. But for these people, you know, these are still young people. These are, I'm not going to call them kids, but young men. Ooh, nice job. Oh, Sierra tries to keep it in on this left wing. Unfortunately, it does go over the touch line, so the Blue Hawks will have a throw in from their deep right back position. Another advantage with the three-man system with the assistant referee also calling that ball in and out consistently there. They're in the right position to make that call. Can't argue with them. Just about 25 minutes left here in the first half. 0-0 zero, zero, still your score as the Bulldogs are taking on the Exeter Blue Hawks in this state championship soccer match. Santerre, nice way to get around, but then foiled by the Exeter defense moving forward. Tennant, nice anticipation, steps forward. Right before that, I'm, I'm not positive, but it looked like Exeter may have stepped up on uh, Gabe Teixeira so that they could not, and Bedford knew that he was offside when they stepped up on him. So they didn't pass it to Teixeira. Pass forward here, finds the feet of Barreto. Now Mannix tries to touch forward. Tennant shields it out and will earn the throw as Nick Myers was in the vicinity for the Blue Hawks. Tennant throws. Good step there by the Blue Hawks. Aiden Powers. We still have the sun in our eyes, but I uh, just noticed that the goalkeeper no longer is uh, dealing with the sun in his eyes. They're only minutes away from this nuisance uh, evaporating, if you will, as Wallace gains possession for the Bulldogs on that far side, tries to connect with Mirza. Flag Sides. is up, so it yeah. will be offside. Successfully, that, that is time. The, the defenders, this is one of the few teams we've seen that have done that to effectively cut off those passes that are going forward to our attackers. Stepping up when you, uh, you're taking a chance sometimes, but in the three-man system, if, if these two coaches are using it properly, uh, it's hard to get away with. It, they're not going to make mistakes. They're probably going to catch it. So Coach Curran, Exeter, I can understand he is making that decision to do that. Mirza gets a ball, serves it out wide right to Wallace. Slide tackle there by the Blue Hawks and the Bulldogs will have their first corner. Down to our left on the far sideline. I wish we had the stats for each of these teams, how many goals off corners, Corey, and how many are short versus Get out of here, you're killing me with that <laughs> You short knew you were going to hear that at some Yes, time. I did. You're killing me. I'm sorry. It's fun. <laughs> I believe Johnson normally takes these, although Balecki being the left footer might range over there. It does look like Johnson will step on. It'll be a right-footed well, outswinger. You, it's definitely a Bedford player that's going to take the corner. <laughs> I sure hope so. This, this sun's brutal right now. Oh, my gosh. Served into the box just across the mouth, a little strong. And that is pushed out by the Blue Hawks towards midfield. But Tennant ranges forward, gains possession, and now he'll settle and bring it all the way back to Kaplow. Kaplow back to Tennant, they'll try this left side. Oh, Into the middle, pass. they miss the pass. Santerre is not quite there. It finds the feet of Barreto, and now Santerre recovers. Great play by Santerre there to, uh, to hold his ground, being in the right position to uh, make it very difficult for the Exeter player to get by him. Johnson back out to Hoey. Blue Hawks deflected it away. Now Benjamin. Challenges in the midfield. 
And Benjamin Powers. wins it. He sure does. One Kaplow on one battle. pops it forward. Santer. And now Johnson. He's onto it, making a run. Trying to make use of those legs. Belecki has served the ball out to this left wing. Passes it in from the, the side. Corner. His left-footed cross deflects off one of those defenders in the middle, I believe, Cam Lacouture. And as you said, the Bulldogs earn a corner down to our left. Near side. Johnson will be taking it again. It appears to me, Corey, I don't know if you can tell as well, agree with this, but it looks like uh, for the most part, Exeter might have a height advantage with uh, the feet on the ground. Did you see that short corner, Bill I, Klein? I couldn't see any of it. Okay, well. The ball was in play. It, it was in <laughs> <laughs> not, not the best play as the Blue Hawks were able to sniff it out rather quickly. Here they push forward. Walensky comes off his line. It's the first time he's touched the ball this afternoon. Again, 0-0 zero, zero is your score. We are halfway through this first half here at Manchester Memorial. The Bulldogs and the Blue Hawks still scoreless as they each seek a championship. Again, of course, the Bulldogs seeking back-to-back -back championships here this afternoon, having taken last year's victory over the Hanover squad. 4-0 was the final. Fuwa comes off of his line as that ball ranged into the Exeter Blue Ox penalty area. Mannix tries to touch wide for Myers, but misses the mark. Bulldogs send it forward, and unfortunately it goes out of bounds. If 60 minutes from now of play, if we're uh, still tied, we've got, uh, because it's postseason now, and semis and finals, the overtime went to sudden victory, two 15s. And then uh, we'll see what happens from there. Pave Pazorek is on for the Blue Hawks as he subst substitutes in for Cooper Vitti. Foul here is called on Barreto, so the Bulldogs restart quickly. Johnson onto it. Some ping pong passing as they navigate the midfield and keep possession quite nicely. Hoey from that right back position sends it back to Kaplow. They were demonstrating the, the basic strategy, basic tactic skill of trapping. Perfect traps, control, and then the passes. And they're just looking for that Aaron pass. Benjamin, beautiful job muscling the Blue Hawks player off of that one. Regains possession for the Bulldogs. Balecki chips it forward. Nice little play himself. for himself. Yeah. But then gets swarmed by three defenders. Mannix crosses up. The defender, Tennant, he's pushing forward. Serves it into the middle. Shot low. Walensky is oh. there. Right to him. The shot came in from Jude Keener, ranging in from midfield as Mannix was able to serve a beautiful ball for the oncoming Keener. His shot was low and strong, but unfortunately for him, right at Walensky. Where Walensky was positioned, he was pretty far back. He did not cut much of the angle, so he really gave a lot of the goal. It was open for a shot, but uh, an unlucky shot that went straight to the keeper. Santer battles Powers at the midfield. Johnson sends it forward. That's going to be too far. And Fua comes off of his line. I believe that was Blue the first good hard shot required a save. Correct, Corey? For the Blue Hawks, yeah, absolutely. And honestly, for, for the Bulldogs yeah. too, yeah. Mirza tries to get onto it, to redirect it out to the right wing that is intercepted by the Blue Hawks defense. Kaplow again coming forward, stepping up with a strong header, trying to link up with his forward teammates. Benjamin now to Balecki. Again, again winning the, uh, the open field sort of balls that are uh, placed not necessarily to a player, but Bedford's getting to those balls. This is a good one. Chipped ahead for Teixeira, deep in the right wing. We'll see how he tries to come out of this. It's tipped out off the Blue Hawk defender, and the Bulldogs will have a throw in very deep in that right corner. Tipped out of bounds by Finn Teixeira Topitzer. going off, I believe. He is, I believe. Yep. Yeah, and he's, he's coming off kind of slowly. It looks like Vinny Rodriguez will be the substitution for the Bulldogs. Yeah, shortly after that uh, that injury, w which occurred taking penalty kicks, he came over the house, and I, I saw the ankle, and it was, it was pretty nasty. 
Wallace tries to push forward there. It is tipped out off of his shin, so the Blue Hawks will have a goal kick. That sun is just about down over the horizon. Hopefully we're getting a little better video of this game. Goal kick forward. Battled at the midfield. Belecki plays it forward and off of a Blue Hawk player, so he'll have a throw in near sideline. 16 minutes to go here in the first half. 0-0 still your score. The Bulldogs battling the Blue Hawks for this state championship. Again, we welcome in our listeners on 105.1 Bedford's WBNH, as well as the rebroadcast for BCTV. Wallace here has a chance, far sideline. Bring it to the middle. Low shot. And it's touch for the corner, save. Looked like that was probably heading for the post. Difficult to tell from up here with the angle and the very tail end of the sun right now. It honestly looked like it was curving out and away, maybe beyond that post, but either way, Fua thought it was dangerous enough to tip it out and away, dove over to his right side and got a hand on it. Colin Johnson will take the corner from our left near side. Dangerous ball at the near post, volleyed out nicely by the Blue Hawks def defenders. Yeah, the defender there kind of on the post was able to get the ball under control and not clear, not had it, didn't have to clear it out. Johnson with a nice stutter step deep down in the left wing. Good Tries pressure. to play Good that pressure. lefty cross. Nice. And they earn it back. Johnson fires, blocked out in front. Santer gets back to his right foot, but layers of defense come to support for the Blue Hawks. Rodriguez steps in front. Looks for Mirza, tipped oh, away. Oh, oh, oh. Missed connection so there. So close. Just a toe by the Exeter defense was able to deflect it out of the way. Otherwise, Mirza was in a dangerous position, especially for him. And the As keeper, Corey, came off his line quickly. Very, very quick, decisive decision to jump on that ball, preventing anything else from happening in there. Wallace now far sideline. Rodriguez crosses, nobody there, trickles across the goal mouth. And the Bulldogs cannot finish as Rodriguez made a beautiful run. Got some space, sent it right across, it evaded Fua. But we've unfortunately seen, nobody there that, to finish for the Bulldogs. Yeah, we've, we've seen that square pass a number of times that, uh, oh, 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 referee, uh, I thought he was, the extra player might have been holding the Bedford player, but the, uh, that square pass through the penalty area, in that case, the goal area. And uh, but you can't always have somebody there waiting for it. Mirza. Benjamin ahead to Mirza. His pass gets deflected. Now Benjamin sends forward Wallace down that right wing again. Touches into the middle, can't connect with Rodriguez. And the Blue Hawks defense is there. Here's Pazorek playing forward and out of bounds. Still 0-0 here, 13 minutes to go in the first half. The Bulldogs battling the Blue Hawks from Exeter in this state championship boys soccer match. Forward for Barreto. He looks far side. Excellent ball control there. Finds Keener. Keener presses forward for the Blue Hawks down that left wing. Not a lot of time in this half of the field for the Blue Hawks, yet we're still knotted at zero. Tennant volleys one out as they looked to find Mannix in the middle. Mannix was looking to... Uh, Near side, Lazowitz has a shot, deflected out. Walensky, balancing act, is able to <laughs> toss the ball back into the penalty area as his <laughs> momentum was coming out. Obviously it would have been a handball if he had it in his hands outside of the box. He was taking Toss a chance with that, but it was a chance worth taking. Sure was. And he uh, he did it. Oh. Aplo with a big ball, tries to play forward to Mears, and now Rodriguez runs onto it. Played out and away by Cam LaCouture for the Blue Hawks. Santerre, nice excuse me, that's there. Johnson. Johnson. Gets his nose in. Gritty dispossession. 50-50 ball. Now Johnson makes a, a play down the wing, and that's going to be a, a foul. A little tug on the shirt, and pleading his case is Jack Blythe, but it seemed fairly obvious that he pulled on Johnson on the way by, so not quite sure what he was 
chirping about. Perhaps Kaplow, the captain standing over the ball, was asking for a card there as it looked like Johnson had a head of steam and that might have been the last defender, but to no avail. Blecky runs over it. Kaplow plays it in. Almost over the head of, oh wow, just barely got his fingertips on it. It did come out of his hands momentarily, but as he turned, the ball fell right back to him. So almost a very dangerous spot for the Blue Hawks as Kaplow challenged from about 30 yards out. Regrouping now and getting into the offensive area for the Blue Hawks. Far sideline now, here's Barreto. Plays a diagonal, looking for Myers, who was on the run. And then Kaplow comes with a header from the center back position. Benjamin plays fans, one high. Fans saw something there, Corey. I did not see anything. That, and that, uh, looked like that could have been an offside if the ball got there. But. The big ball played forward by La Couture, Hoey. Plays one and shanks it outside the far sideline. The sun is finally setting here. We can actually see what's going on. A nice relief here for us up in the booth. Lights are coming on here at Manchester Memorial, the home of the Crusaders. Again, we appreciate them hosting today's soccer Division I boys championship game. They also hosted the semifinals this past Wednesday. Both good matches and yielding today's matchup. Benjamin challenges for Barreto. Barreto plays it forward. Wallace cuts it back and seeds a throw in for the Blue Hawks. Far sideline deep on that left wing. During the regular season, many of the situations like that, Bedford did not just kick the ball out defensively. They were able to uh, maintain possession anyway and, and play it up the field. But against this team, the prop that's part of a little change in the strategy there. I imagine the coach Pepper might have said, hey, if you feel like it's pressured and you need to, don't worry about it. Kick it out. Sure, be smart. Make make, make the, the uh, pressure off. Yeah. yeah, take the pressure off. Let your defense regroup. Yeah, you want to keep possession, but not always possible. And if it seems a little sticky, let's make the safe play instead of the aggressive mistake. Benjamin here heads it forward. Rodriguez can't gain possession as Topitzer will play it back for La Couture. That was one of the first times so far in the game that uh, Exeter did maintain possession anyway, although they didn't get any shots off. They maintained possession in their attacking half. They play it all the way back to Fua. He plays it near side as they change fields. Now Mannix plays one through the middle. Here's Keener. Keener plays it forward, Kaplow anticipates it nicely. Steps up, intercepts the pass, and will calmly regroup with Colin Johnson. Johnson making a run now again, left wing. Tips it in the middle as he was being tracked by Keener. Rodriguez, now Mirza. Johnson gets to his right foot, will have a go, looks for the cross as Wallace was cutting in from that right wing, but it's tipped down and out of harm's way by the Blue Hawks. Bilecki tries for the left wing, but his volley will go out of bounds. 0-0, zero, zero, still your score here. 7.30 left in the first half as the Bulldogs from Bedford battle the Blue Hawks from Exeter in this boys' Division I soccer championship match. Benjamin brings it down. Finds Wallace for the Bulldogs. They play it back. Hoey plays the ball along. Ooh, tough collision on that far sideline. Good no call, I think. I mean, there's some chirping going on here in the stands, but again, both players, oh, they do call it actually. Benjamin on the foul. I thought that was a good no call, but. I didn't see the, can't hear it from up here, especially with the uh, the headset on. I. I I agreed with you, Corey, on that. I didn't necessarily, I thought it was just going to be either a total ignorance or wouldn't have been a play on because the ball went out of bounds, didn't it? It did. It should have been a throw in uh, if, if the yeah. foul was not called. But again, both players looking back, tracking the ball. It seemed like they were both making fair plays on it, shoulder to shoulder, pretty hard contact. But uh, 
the official felt that Ethan Benjamin might have been a little bit out of control, so he made the call. Ball goes out of bounds on that far sideline after a throw in by Ahoy. Tipped out, I believe, by Mirza. So the Blue Hawks will throw it in. In a final yesterday, quick note, a uh, team won its first state boys soccer championship. That was Milford uh, over Campbell High School. And uh, the unique thing about that is that Milford has been played in both the top size school with us and then uh, drop down to a lower level if they've, their population over there in Milford's gone down while the population of these other towns has gone up the last 15, 20 years. The Blue Hawks into the offensive area, ranging forward, trying to make connections. Getting onto it here is Howe, turning away from pressure Mannix. He finds Lazowitz. They switch fields all the way to the other side. Here's Vitti, gets Good. deflected out of bounds and the Bulldogs earn the throw. Hoey will take it from his right back position for the Bulldogs. Big ball forward, and now Rodriguez ranges forward. Can't track to it. La Couture will touch it, and it goes out of bounds. Right about midfield on that far sideline. Quick programming note for everybody out there. Next broadcast for WBNH and BC TV will be next Saturday, November 16th at 1 p.m., where... The boys' football squad will be playing in the quarterfinals. They will be playing against Alvern, who won today over Concord 33-10. So the Bulldogs will take on Alvern next Saturday. What was the regular, did they play in the regular season, Corey? They did not. No, the Bulldogs did not play against Alvern in the regular season. So this is a, a fresh matchup this year. Some that are similar to this, where these two teams did not meet. Of course, the Bedford squad went through the regular season undefeated and come into the playoffs as that number one seed, well earned. Benjamin ranges forward. Ooh, That's tough hard shot. It. Wow, they play, play it as. Play on, play on, play it's a on. Good ball. Teixeira in the penalty area. That was a tough shot by Benjamin. He took a hard one there at midfield. Two Good. players colliding. Tough, strong play. Not dirty in any way. Just a hard collision. Good decision by the referee, who's just stopped the uh, the, the clock, as well. But that was a that was a very good call. I I saw the foul, and saw the referee's arms go out, swing out, indicating the play on. But I couldn't see what happened right after that because there's, there's a section of wall in front of me between windows here. But when I saw where the ball was and the fact that Bedford did maintain control, it was a perfect call. Howe plays a long ball across the field. It goes out of bounds for the Blue Hawks. Hoey throws it in quickly for Wallace. Yeah, it was that play on situation. The Bulldogs had possession in a threatening area. So again, I, I agree it was, it was the right play on call, not blowing the whistle. Unfortunately, pretty much right as the play on was off, Gate, Gabe the Bulldogs lost possession. Yes, Teixeira is back in. Touch it to him, touch it to him. There he goes. Rodriguez does touch it to him. He tries to force it into the middle to, uh, excuse me, Johnson, who was there. Couldn't quite make the connection. For the first time in this match, I can see uh, Bill Jennings' little side TV screen that he's added on. He has, a, in addition, this little fancy arm thing hanging off the side of the camera, very handy. My apologies, that was Santera that was connecting with Teixeira. Balecki now with the throw. Connects with Johnson. Keep it in. Teixeira tries to track it down on the end line, but it does go out of bounds for a goal kick. Two and a half minutes remaining here in the first half. 0-0 zero, zero is your score. The game. No real, I'm sorry, go ahead, Bill. Well, I'm just going to real quick mention that the field clock will stop at two minutes. In the first half, it stops at five in the second half and the referee keeps the time on the field, and like he did before, which I thought was perfect, there was no ball for the throw-in, and at this point in time, he stopped the, the clock there. Corey, take it away. <laughs> I was just gonna, gonna basically mention that there really haven't been any real strong, promising scoring opportunities for either squad throughout this first half. There was a ball that trickled across the goal mouth for the Bulldogs, a beautiful cross by Vinny Rodriguez, but Nobody was really there in position to finish, so that was the closest either team has really gotten 
Tennant plays it forward. Can't connect. Saw Gabe Teixeira up there with the possibility of the one-on-one -on -one if he could get the ball to him, but he couldn't. Benjamin. Little, little bump, little bump. Sure, he's being harassed in the midfield by Aiden Powers. If you saw the player throw his hands up like that, that's an indication to me that he knows he's fouling. Good cut there by Not Wallace, but <laughs> can't connect with Johnson. Now we have a two on two as the counter strike looks to happen. Caplo with a side tackle. Mannix got free it in the middle of the field. It would have been one on one. And now a counter strike yeah. for the Bulldogs. They get forward. Teixeira looks to go one on one, tries the back heel. It gets foiled. And the Blue Hawks clear it out and away. Tennant lets it come down. He settles. Plays it through the middle for Benjamin. Benjamin a little slow on the ball. Coming up and intercepting was Keener. He gets away from pressure and finds Lazowitz. I'd say that uh, Bedford has won about eight out of 10 of the one-on-one -on -one challenges like that. But that time the Exeter player, a fine job of getting possession. Here's Keener ranging forward. Far side, cross through the middle, stepping up. Balecki volleys it forward. Teixeira comes over, challenges. Breaks it up and the whoops. Looked like we might have had it stolen again. Here's Howe, Sean Howe for the Blue Hawks. Harassed by nice Balecki, play. he touches nice it forward. Play. Teixeira ahead for Rodriguez. He'll wait as the Blue Hawks defense is back. He stalls things oh. down, tried to get Balecki on a run on that left wing. Balecki was not on the same page. And it goes out of bounds for a goal kick for the Blue Hawks. Under two minutes, and there is the halftime whistle. We'll take a break here. Score is knotted at zero. Again, neither squad really having any solid scoring opportunities through that first half. We will regroup and have second half, half action for you after a short break. But again, welcome everybody back in. Corey Munster Tiger here with Bill Klein, live out on WBNH 105.1 in Bedford, New Hampshire, bringing you soccer action here for today's New Hampshire State Championship game for Division I boys soccer. And hopefully within the next 40 minutes plus, we will have a 2024 champion uh, could be the repeat of Bedford, or it could be a comeback for the Exeter side who has not had that championship for a number of years. So time will tell. Be interesting to see if the, the teams come out and look any different. But like I said, when I talked to both coaches before the game, they said they're gonna do their thing. They will do their thing. And as we have this 40 minutes of play upcoming, some things hopefully will be sorted out. So. An interesting thing here, Bill, we, we did observe that, and you've talked about it throughout the regular season, that they changed the, the overtime rules for the regular season and also for the playoffs, if you don't mind repeating what we would see, say that we end regulation time still knotted either at 1-1 or 0-0. Again, 0-0 is still the score right now, but if we do end in a tie, go over those overtime rules. What, what are the timing? Is it golden goal, it's 10 minutes each? Just just refresh everybody's right. memory out Regular there. Regular season, we had no overtime, and that was based on the fact that many fields do not have uh, lights, and when you get at the end of the season, if you have overtime in the regular season, you play some, play, some places are gonna be playing almost in the dark. Also, the fact that other the other major leagues, like college soccer, got rid of overtime during the regular season as well. So what we're looking at is, uh, in the first two rounds, it was two 10-minute sudden victory periods. And then when we go to the semis and the finals, two 15s followed by penalty kicks. The first five penalty kicks, five different players. And then they changed this a little bit. They tweaked it. The second five, and all these players, are the names are given by the coaches to the referees at that time, that they start the PKs. If they have to go to another five, then it is 1-1, one, 1-1, one, 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 back and forth until one has the advantage and we have a winner. And here we go, 40 minutes. We are underway here in the second half. Again, the Division I Boys State Championship game. Thank you. 
Deep in that right defensive wing for the Blue Hawks. Deflected out of bounds for, for, by Colin Johnson. Blue Hawks will throw it in. Far sideline, Kaplow steps up, volleys it forward. Mirza comes back, heads it down and finds the feet of Johnson. Nice touch by Mirza to make that decision to use his head and touch it back to his teammate. Great turn there by Johnson. Unfortunately, it does go out of bounds on that far sideline. But he was using that outside of his right foot, making a turn to his right. Gained himself some space. Kaplow comes forward and volleys it, looking for Teixeira. Headed down by the Blue Hawks. I believe that was Barreto. And now here stepping up was Topitzer. He plays it forward again, Kaplow stepping through, showing that senior leadership that he has brought all year long from that center back position. Of course, Kaplow, a captain of this year's team along with Ethan Benjamin. Benji on the ball now, plays it forward. Both of these teams, their, their coaches prior to the match, you know, talked to me about how much respect they have for each other. And they they said, you know, hey, they, it, they, they'd be shocked if it's not gonna be a low scoring game. Opportunity here, Mirza plays it forward. Wallace onto it. Teixeira was coming through, couldn't quite get a head or a foot on it. Now Wallace plays it across, Mirza heads it. Oh! Can't quite get a solid shot on goal. And the Blue Hawks come out of their own end. Santer now back onto it for the Bulldogs. Best action that we've seen either way so far as the Bulldogs pressing forward. They can smell the opportunity, but couldn't quite find the back of the net there. The referee making the call on that throw in. They were everybody's turn of the linesman, but it, the referee was much closer as he should be. The diagonal system of control does mean that he's running in the diagonal. So he's trying to box the play in between the referee. Look at this. Here's that again. Let it go out. Nice to play corner. it forward, good, but good. earns the corner. Good job there. Good decision. Yeah, well, all I'm saying is, is that, you know, they're trying to box the plan so you have two referees viewing the ball at all times. And when he goes into that corner, the referee's moving to his left because he's got the far side or near to us assistant referee looking from the back side of the players. Johnson will play it in, righty in swinger, looking Ball. for the head of a teammate. Kaplo plays it forward and coming out from his goal line is Fua, he picks it up and will settle. He'll kick it away, actually, he punts it rather quickly. Looking for Mannix. Ball finds the feet of Barreto, he cuts it, plays it across, Keener. Counter strike opportunity for the Blue Hawks. Far sideline, they range forward Try to step around the defender there, but true to the task are the Bulldogs. Benjamin challenges in the midfield now, and he will pick up a foul. Surprised they didn't let that play on there, but as the Exeter player couldn't quite tell who it was, I believe it was Barreto, was back onto the ball rather quickly, and now La Couture will come forward from his center back position and play a long ball into the penalty area. If all of you listened along uh, during that, that halftime when Lauren Fox was up here, it was interesting, Corey, to hear his perspective on the officiating. La Couture plays it in. Sorry to cut you off, but nope. opportunity there for the Blue Hawks. Yeah, go ahead with Lauren Lonnie Fox. With this. Yeah, just the, the different perspective where he thought that the referee was not doing a great job, that he felt he was being a little inconsistent. Which I, 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 I don't know. High scrutiny, no matter who you are, the referees are always gonna feel the heat. Uh, I, you know, as you heard, he felt like play was rather rough in the midfield, but a couple of calls that could have been made in the box were not. I, I agree with at least one of them down to our left-hand side where Mirza had a, uh, a, a tough hit from his backside, no call there. But either way, we played on, and 0-0, we still sit. What a potential dangerous throw into that. Pulled out and away by Fua. The goal area. Rolled out to his right hand side and the Blue Hawks will play it forward. Tennant steps around the offensive player for the Blue Hawks. Coming forward now. 
And having a challenge here, Walensky comes out from his line and makes a save. Huge play there, Walensky coming all the way out. Corner. Collecting it away. That was Keener, I believe, coming forward. Had a great opportunity and just couldn't quite get it around Walensky. Great opportunity there for the Blue Hawks, snuffed honestly, out by Walensky. Honestly looked to me like that was probably going to be a first goal of the game, but it wasn't. Still 0-0 here from Manchester Memorial, ticking down to 34 minutes in the regulation play. Lefty in-swinger corner kick is headed out and away. Nice clear. By Benjamin, no, that was Kaplow. And now Ali. Mirza trips over the ball. And although Weird. that was, I think, clearly the ball, Corey, the, the fans were yelling at that, so. <laughs> of course, you know, he, t he hit Indians. the ground somewhat hard, but again, he didn't trip over the Blue Hawks player. He tripped over the ball. Chip ahead here, Exeter, goal! And that was an excellent trap turn shot, well played. And, I, you know, I, I was just going to say something, Corey, about the way that uh, the game has gone, that, uh, the, the Bedford defense hasn't had to work all that real hard because the midfielders have been doing most of the work. And marvelous chip ahead. Barreto came onto it for the Blue Hawks and found that lower left corner. And the Blue Hawks go up 1-0 here with 33 minutes left in the second half. Didn't quite see where the assist came from, but it was a beautiful chip ahead. Didn't get to see a lot of the, uh, especially, you know, all the away games that Bedford's played, but I, I, I have no idea. Do you have any idea, Corey, how many times it, they've been down? They gave the assist to Marshall Lazowitz. Again, a marvelous touch forward. And yeah, I believe this is the, the first time the Bulldogs have been down, and now Mirza has an opportunity and strikes! No, he does not. Oh, That's outside of the cage. Just to the outside. Apologies. Of My goodness, that looks like he had finished. He tried to cut it and just outside of that far post. Again, apologies there. That sure looked like he had answered immediately, but it stays 1-0. Well, he didn't miss by, by much, Corey. That had to be just, just outside. Either way, no goal. It is a goal kick. And it is headed out of bounds by the Bulldogs. Yes, I, I believe this must be the first time the Bulldogs have been behind all season. I believe they only had, I'm not positive, but I think only four goals scored on them the entire season. Throw in far sideline for Logan Tennant. Comes all the way forward. And now the Bulldogs back onto it. They earn the throw in on the far side. Forward, here's Mirza again. He's onto it, pressing forward. Tries to get to his left, slide tackled nicely. La Couture. Referee signaled play on on that. Well, geez, I didn't think it was a play on, it just looked like a, a nice tackle. Wallace here. Gains possession and Hoey back onto it. Tries to tip forward but stepped into by the Blue Hawks. We'll see how aggressive and how early the aggressiveness comes from the Bulldogs. Of course, playing from behind now, the Blue Hawks lead 1 0 on a great goal by Barreto, Alan Barreto for the Blue Hawks. Good cut back here, stepping in was Johnson. Walensky. Gathers and plays forward. Here's Barreto, the goal scorer. Tips it ahead for himself. Now looking left side, here's Mannix. Mannix all the way down by that goal line. Tipped around, it stays inbounds for now and now finally slowly rolls over the end line for a corner. Yeah, I just checked the stats, uh, Corey. Bedford had five goals scored on them in the regular season. Exeter 13. Same, very similar uh, final record, except for very last game, extra tie for the Exeter side. Mannix plays it across. 
Man. Getting onto it here and coming off of the goal line was Hoey. That ball had eyes for the back of the net, still getting batted around in the penalty area and then finally cleared by the Bulldogs. Good opportunity again for the Blue Hawks. Hoey was just there and on the line and in position to deflect it out. But Walensky, phenomenal saves before, beaten for the goal. And then there, Hoey was able to come to the rescue of his goalkeeper. Okay, now 30 line. minutes to go. 30 minutes left to play here. Lazowitz with the throw. Bounces high. Batted around in Bedford's penalty area. Now played across. Trying to get onto it was Cooper Vitti. And now another opportunity. Goal! Goal for Alan Barreto again. Got onto a loose ball, got to his right foot and found the lower right corner this time. For the first 45 minutes, Exeter had no attack inside the penalty area. And now, in the last few minutes, Exeter totally turns things upside down, inside out, upside down, all the way around. Two to nothing. Incredible. Just five minutes apart, Barreto. Strikes twice. And the Blue Hawks look like they're in commanding position here. 29-37 left in this second half. Two very clean, excellently executed goals. Barreto with the brace has the Blue Hawks up by two. And now the urgency is really going to ratchet up on this Bulldog squad as they are in a spot. Throw forward by Hoey, Barreto onto it again. Pivots, turns, looks for help. Benjamin harasses him. They find Powers, distributes wide. Here's Topitzer, he ranges forward past midfield. Nice step there by Belecki, little one, two. Excuse me, that was, no, yeah, it was Belecki. Johnson comes from behind and Foul. earns the ball back. Play on. Balecki earns the throw on that far sideline. Into the middle here, Santer. Forward for Johnson, back to Santer. Foiled on that right back position, Topitzer, but now the Bulldogs have an opportunity. They range forward, coming in from the left wing. Ooh, tough one there. No call. Johnson was ranging forward. Here's Barreto again. Caplo slows him down. There's a Plays it forward into the middle. And now across. Walensky comes out. And again, slows things down. Is that Mannix right there in front of the goal? I think it is. I believe that was Keener. Oh, excuse no. me. No, you're right. That was yeah, Mannix, Mannix coming across. He's got a, a large presence out there on the field. Pilecki. Can't get by the Blue Hawks defense, and now Benjamin earns it back. Plays it out wide. Now comes back to it. He ranges into the middle, <laughs> across the middle of the field, and changes fields. Hoey steps in. Great job by Hoey. Forward for Wallace. Wallace down, down the right wing. Even with the top of the box. Tries to step through, and now earns a corner kick for the Bulldogs. Johnson hustles near side, down to our right. Excuse me, this is Santerra that will take this. Still a lot of time to play, but uh, obviously this is uh, new pressure that uh, Bedford's not used to doing to have to come back like this, especially down two goals at this point. Santerra plays it just inside the six yard box and headed out by the Blue Hawks defense. Benjamin onto it, near sideline. Tries to play it forward, that's deflected out by Vitti. And now cleared out by Fua. Fui, Fua happy just to uh, get a break there as Bedford's starting to uh, mount a little bit of an organized attack. Here's Hoey, tries a big throw, looking in the middle for Mirza. Can't quite get ahead on it. And trying to clear it out here was Keener. And it comes all the way back to Fua. He pounces on it, falls all the way to the ground, and will have his defense clear up. 
Punts it into the middle of the field. Caplo comes forward, heads it all the way to Mirza. Faints to his right, goes out to his left. Here's Rodriguez. Rodriguez, nice play here. Look at this. Can't connect into the middle. Needed for that one more pass. Played all the way out. And now your goal scorer, two goals for Barreto. As the Bulldogs trail 2-0 to the Blue Hawks, Benjamin comes back, earns the ball back for the Bulldogs. Wallace into the middle. He'll switch fields. Tennant comes forward, presses that left side. Balecki now all the way on that left touch line. Tries to get by. Finds a little bit of space, comes across, and right to the goalkeeper, Fua. He did not move his feet. He didn't need to. He corrals it, pulls his defense up, and we tick down to 25 minutes to go in this game. The Blue Hawks lead 2-0 on two goals, just five minutes apart for Alan Barreto. The first on a beautiful chip forward, the second on a corral and a turn. Found low corners, the first down to that low left corner and the second to that low right corner. Just outstanding plays by Alan Barreto. Mannix with a throw in near sideline now. He'll slow things down wisely. Lazowitz will take the throw. He waits to set things up. And time ticks away. Barreto heads it. Pennant plays it forward. Santer will run onto it. Plays it to Balecki. Little chip forward as he looked for Santer getting free. And now Benjamin comes onto it. Avoids two defenders and now he'll press on that left wing. His pass is tipped away. 50-50 ball and now it's earned by the Blue Hawks. Santer now into the middle. Rodriguez was fixing his shoe and couldn't quite run onto it. Played forward and long. Here's Mannix, but it does go out of bounds. Bulldogs throw. It's a shoe fixing festival over here to our right. <laughs> it's kind of, I, I've not seen that. I do remember that in the pl a playoff game, girls' playoff game, I believe it was last year, that a, a player went to tie their shoes and the referee gave them a timeout, which was totally incorrect. Mm. They're out in the field, you, you can't do it like, it's not done like that. Caplo tips it away from the on-rushing Barreto. That's now what a you big call throw. color commentating, Corey. Fair enough, appreciate all those Add shoes. a little color. Color here, we're gonna need some more support. Barreto looking for the hat trick. He takes a big oh. shot with his left foot and it goes well over the cage. But again, these Blue Hawks are not just turtling. They are ready to score again. They want to keep the pressure on this Bulldogs defense and they earn it back here. Chip forward, Barreto, beautiful oh. save by Walensky. Wow, diving to his right, gets just his right paw on it. That was a marvelous volley by Barreto and his bid for a hat trick was pushed aside by Walensky, but what an amazing volley by Barreto. I'd say that's the, uh, probably the biggest save that Walensky's made this entire season. It's a beautiful, beautifully executed uh, dive to the right, his right. The Blue Hawks play it on the ground, passes, and Hoey is able to, excuse me, that was Wallace, tips it out near sideline. And the Blue Hawks will have a throw. throw Big maybe. throw as they can threaten into the box. Volleyed ahead. Walensky lets it go out of bounds. So it is a goal kick for the Bulldogs. They need to motor. Bill will have to see if that save has any bearing. Again, the Bulldogs trail 2-0 with just under 22 minutes to go in this game. They have some work to do, but that was, again, a marvelous save by Walensky. Caplo, far side, Tennant. Runs back onto it, looks quickly to Balecki. That is deflected away and Tennant will retreat. Caplo now. In the games that I've seen, this is the first game in which we played a team that was able to prevent the Bedford's you know, multiple, like I mentioned before, the touches 
you know, 10, 15, 20 in a row. This is interesting right here. Wallace, a little stutter step as he brought it down beautifully. They try to tackle him. It's foiled by the Blue Hawks. And now Johnson plays it wide right. Teixeira, who's back in there, is down to the right wing, who gets it now. Plays it forward. His pass through the middle gets tipped away, and Mannix comes on to it. Gets it out to his left. Heavy touch is taken away by Caplow and played forward. Barreto onto it, though, for Exeter. They play it across. Here's Lazowitz. Just coming up. Sideline. 20 minutes left. Half of the half. 20 minutes to go. D1 finals. Exeter leads Bedford 2-0 here with those 21 minutes left. Hoey plays it out. Well out of bounds. They chase that one down, but there's an extra ball there. So Topitzer will throw it in. He finds the feet of Powers into the middle. Lazowitz, far sideline. Tips it ahead, looking for Mannix. Tennant will volley it out of bounds. Still deep in Bulldog territory. These Blue Hawks are not relenting. The Bulldogs will need to dig deep. They'll need to find at least one tally soon. Or this is going to be out of reach. The foul is called on the Blue Hawks back in within Bedford's 18-yard box. It was eight years ago that uh, Exeter had their last state championship. And uh, they're hungry for one. One of the most winning programs in the state year after year after year. Very, very seldom have a truly off year. And even if they're not in the top, uh, you know, four or six at the end of the season, they've moved ahead most years. Wallace earns the ball for the Bulldogs. They find Balecki on the far side as Tennant came forward. Chips it ahead. Santer. Dispossessed by Powers. Nice job by Santer. Win that ball back. Benjamin now, near side, Wallace. Tavis Wallace tries to go one on one, that's foiled. Played ahead. Hoey is able to gain possession. Plays it back for Kaplow. Kaplow plays a long ball, looking for Mirza. Got a foot on it, deflected it to the near side of the field where Benjamin is onto it. Takes a little space, makes a nice one on one move into the middle. Here's Balecki. Balecki, stutter step, fires one in, right at Fua. Gabe Texero was right there on the doorstep. If that was misplayed, he was ready to pick it up, put it in the back of the net. Didn't ready have a for the rebound, smart play there by Teixeira to track that all the way in. But Fua was sure-handed and no opportunity for the Bulldogs. Johnson comes down with it. He's chased back in the defensive area by Barreto. Shielded off, and the Blue Hawks will have a throw. 2 0 is your score. Exeter leads Bedford. 17 and a half remaining in this game. As Exeter looks to foil the plans of a back to back for the Bulldogs. Heavy touch here lands at the feet of Wallace. He hesitates, now moves forward, taking some space. Finds it far side to Balecki. Good defensive play foul. there by Exeter. Good call, Balecki fouls. And now the Blue Hawks will be able to burn off a few seconds as they drag their feet. Gabe Teixeira and Ali Mirza are up there with uh, you know front row seats, hoping that the ball would be played to them one more time. They're the two that have connected uh, you know, consistently together to end a play for the Bedford side to end in a goal. Not this afternoon, not yet anyway. Nice move here. Keener into the middle. Barreto tried to play it back to him. Deflected away by the Bulldogs. Teixeira onto it now, but loses. Playing forward. Topitzer to Barreto. Offside. For Mannix, who was there. cutting in. Yeah, it was going to be off, but didn't matter. 
Now Mirza tries to track near side. La Couture keeps it inbound. That was purely a lucky play by him. <laughs> Didn't look too pretty, but it worked. Effective. Bitti avoids some pressure, and now an player, errant pass. Player open the far left. I can't tell who it is, but nice move by Gabe. Teixeira crosses. He's, oh. The Blue Hawks are there to head it out of the way. Johnson. Nice, nice, nice ball, unfortunately. Ooh, tough tackle there. That Could might, see a card on yeah, that, that no, might, no, no, that no. might earn a card. No, he would have stopped the clock. The first thing is to stop the clock. And Bedford, quick replay here. We're back onto it. Oh, they look for Santer Johnson had him, but couldn't quite make the connection. Benjamin fires. That gets foiled, and clearing it all the way out are the Blue Hawks from their defensive end. Toppets are clearing things away. We'll stop the clock for an injury, as I believe that's how Sean Howe will be trotting to the sideline. Tennant is going to go out as Coach Peppers puts in Vinny Rodriguez wanting some more offensive firepower. Looks like they might change their formation and put too high with Mirza and Rodriguez. Yeah, they move Gabe Teixeira back in the hopes of him uh, probably being able to feed one of them since they're a little healthier. Let Gabe do what he's doing right here. Balecki is back on that left back. And now Mirza tries to get to it. Teixeira feeding forward. But <laughs> the Blue Hawks are stacking it up on this defensive end smartly, and they foil that. Owe oh, to Teixeira. Teixeira settles, plays it in. And that's cleared away. La Couture onto it for the Blue Hawks. Caplo heads it forward to Benjamin. Benjamin, near side, Hoey. Hoey. Excuse me, that's, yes, it is Hoey. Now Teixeira. It's out of bounds. Teixeira keeps it in. Oh, tough play there. Be careful. As he gifted a throw in to the Blue Hawks, and they'll drag their feet again. 2-0 is your score, 14 minutes to go. In this game, the Blue Hawks lead the Bulldogs in this state championship final. Big throw forward for Exeter. Ranging forward now, left wing, Keener. Plays it forward, Mannix. Heavy touch, that'll go over the line and yield a goal kick for Bedford. Maddox just displaying his speed, not just uh, the techniques, but he obviously very quick on his feet. I wonder if he runs track, Corey. Who knows? Somebody does. Capelo <laughs> plays it forward. Who knows? There, oh, look at that. Here's Ali. a touches it forward, tries to link with Rodriguez, just out of his reach. Almost got there. Wallace, though, steps in, moves forward into the middle of the field, draws two defenders, drops it for Santer. Bring it wide. Bring Teixeira it wide. for Mirza. Touches back in the middle. Santer back to Teixeira. And the Blue Hawks swarm and take it away. Here's Mannix. He'll settle. Plays it forward. Here's Keener on that far right wing. Kaplo plays him one on one. Keener chips forward. Mannix is well offside and they do blow it dead. The, uh, some of this little trickery type of fancy footwork that Bedford's playing works for them when they're playing an opponent that isn't quite as talented as this Exeter side is. But the Exeter side has picked up uh, almost 100% of those attempts. Barreto looking for Mannix. Mannix fouls. And the Bulldogs will have a free kick. Caplo sets it down. Was looking to restart quickly, but will take his time now and play a long ball from that left side of the box. A tough call there for Exeter as they were trying to post up. Myers will get called as he was challenging Santer close to midfield. And now Balecki changes fields near side. Hoey, excuse me, that's Wallace back to Hoey. Two of them look so similar. Hoey plays it forward looking for Mirza. Deflected away by Exeter. 
Wallace, now Rodriguez to Shara. Plays it forward, draws two defenders, gets to the end line, chips it across, nobody there. Santer, excuse me, Johnson. Johnson should have stayed wider on that, at least in my opinion, to, to be ready to move in on that type of a ball. Tough one there, Santer tries to play corner. it through and earns the corner. Santer hustles to that far corner, down to our right. Wants to play this quickly. He'll take a right-footed in-swinger. Puts his hand in the air, approaches, swings it through, low liner, touched out by the Blue Hawks. Benjamin will fire, deflected out front by the Blue Hawks. Wallace meets two or three defenders. That ball that Benjamin played had Fua diving to his right. So if it didn't hit one of those Blue Hawks defenders in front, it had a, a, a very good chance. And it wouldn't have been uh, just a one goal game in the semis if it hadn't been for the block shots of these Bedford players. Whistle blows, foul, foul here by Exeter. We're ticking down to 10 minutes here. Exeter leads Bedford in this state championship division one soccer match. 2-0 is your score. The Bulldogs showing more and more urgency as we tick down. This is close enough for him to potentially shoot for that far upper corner. Balecki will come on to it. Righty chips it ahead. Looking for a teammate in a threatening area. Cleared out by the Blue Hawks. Balecki to Rodriguez. Swarmed there by the Exeter defense and they just play a long ball forward. Exeter's Hoey. dropped an extra defender back at this point. They're playing stopper and uh, an extra back there in the middle. I don't know what to call them, but uh, they've just got their they're playing defensively for now. They're, they're happy with the two goal lead. As they should, they're packing the area just outside of the 18 yard box and now playing forward. Barreto can't get to it. Kaplow plays it near side to Hoey. Hoey, outside of his foot, gets tackled. No call, no call needed as the ball was touched there. Teixeira plays it to Hoey. Nice. All the way back to nice Kaplow. control there by Teixeira to get it back. Back pass and then moving it forward. Ali, come on. Kaplow trying for Ali Mirza, couldn't quite get onto it. Here's Mannix clearing out for the Blue Hawks. Strength and speed now ahead to Barreto. Barreto can't get it past Kaplow, who plays it near side to Hoey and now Wallace. Even with the emphasis on defense by the uh, Blue Hawks, correct? Blue Hawks? Extra yeah, Blue yeah, Hawks. Yeah. I haven't said that all game. Wow. They're still. Oop, I've said it several times, there. and the Blue Hawks will <laughs> foul. It's not that I haven't been listening to you, Corey. <laughs> Trust me on that. I've listened to every word you've said. But what I was going to say is, in spite of this extra defense, Exeter still got that player all the way over midfield to challenge our fullback, who had a rush to make a play in the ball, which hasn't not happened Bedford's entire season. That's not happened. This Exeter team is highly, highly skilled, obviously, to be ahead two to nothing with good goals. Balecki runs over it. Kaplo fires one in. Fua is there. Saves, falls to the ground. And as we approach seven and a half minutes, the other thing they have not done is score here today. They are down 2-0. Exeter leads in this game. Fua shanks the punt. Kaplo, excuse me, that was Benjamin with the head. Now Johnson heads yeah, it back to Balecki. Unfortunately, they pop it forward for Rodriguez. Nice hard shot but right at the keeper instead of looking for the upper corner on that one to get it over the head of the defenders. Rodriguez earns it back for the Bulldogs. Here's Santer to Johnson. Back to Balecki. Santer turns. Looks for Mirza cutting through. Can't connect. Fua comes out and smothers it. Seven minutes to go, 2-0 lead for Exeter. Bulldogs really getting down to desperation time. They're gonna have to tilt the field, but they're also gonna have to find the back of the net, not once, but twice. Benjamin heads it. Johnson touches it for Teixeira. Teixeira, Wallace now. Kaplow. Balecki. 
Galecki forward. They try one, two there, but it's touched out and away, and now Exeter looks to counter strike. Mannix, through ball, nice between his legs. He'll settle things down. Here's Keener, he'll quiet things. Keener with his right foot, can't get it on the cage. The Bulldogs have a goal kick. This is those, those, those counter strike opportunities again as Bulldog presses, uh, the Bulldogs press forward. They leave themselves open to one of these counter strikes. They've changed their formation, moved some folks forward as they look to get on the scoreboard. Now Kaplow will come forward after the goal kick. Rodriguez deflects it. Mirza can't get to it. Cleared out and away. It was Blythe. Now Wallace into the middle. Plays it all the way across. Balecki. Closing in on the penalty area. Here's Johnson. Colin C.J. Johnson gets to his right, plays one across, and it's headed out and away to Barreto. He just clears it out to midfield. Kaplow, near side, Hoey. Wallace has had a great game tonight. He's played very, very well. This Blue Hawks defense just snuffing out all of these long balls into Mirza as they're trying again and again to find him right at the top of the box. Or Rodriguez, another. Here's Mirza trying to get onto it. Can't. Coming in, Wallace has an opportunity. Can't turn. Shot! Rodriguez skies it well over and out of the stadium. That went over the green monster. And the Bulldogs had a bit of a threat there, but can't muster a shot on goal. Yeah, other than the, the dead ball situations, the restarts, uh, including the corners, that's the first shot that was... Uh, really you know hit hard however we are inside five minutes the scoreboard clock has stopped 2-0 is your score the Exeter Blue Hawks lead the Bedford Bulldogs here in this state championship game division one boys soccer and each second that ticks off it looks bleaker and bleaker for your Bulldogs nice one two here getting through a ping pong ball and finding one of several Exeter defenders stacked up out maybe 15 yards from that goal line. Teixeira here. Now Hoey. Teixeira. Slips as he goes to strike the ball and the Blue Hawks will. He's holding his knee. No. Yeah, that looks it's not comfortable. His, uh, yeah. Knee or calf or. Stop the clock here and. Uh, Might have been that same ankle. Oh no, you great, think he's great, cramping. Great sportsmanship. Look, look, this is great. Yeah, Barreto, your goal scorer for the Blue Hawks, is helping stretch out to share. I believe that's a cramp. Yeah, I, th I, I think you're right. Well, because of what they're doing, they know what they're doing. They know each other, and uh, they know their body. You know, Gabe knows his body. And uh, look like a calf cramp as they're trying to push down on his foot. Yeah. Looks like it is relieved now as he's back on his feet but limping. Yeah. Tough one there, and, and as you said, just great sportsmanship there by your goal scorer. Yes, your only goal scorer is he has both for Exeter, Alan Barreto, helping to share it back to his feet, helping him right away to stretch out that calf cramp. To share it, will go to the near sideline. They'll yeah, send he, in a he substitution. Needs to come out the uh, the the assistant referee, I think, was explaining that to him that he did have to go out. Uh, and I saw Coach Pepper up there talking to a player who's coming in for him. Logan Tennant will come in on the back line as they push Eli Kaplow forward. Tennant will play center back now. They're looking for Kaplow to make something happen up top as he has some offensive skills that can be explored. Tennant will be that center back as Teixeira slowly makes his way over there. They've stopped the clock and they're allowing a few minutes here for him to get to that far sideline. Neither Coach are my Pepper. associates here in the press box know how much time's left. Did you start this and stop it? I did uh, not, I did not have an accurate time. So we've, we probably are at least three minutes in. Balecki will try one from deep. That goes 
far and outside. We gotta be getting down to about two minutes left in this game and further and further out of reach for the Bedford Bulldogs. The Exeter Blue Hawks lead 2-0 here as we approach the end of this game. Again, two goals by Alan Barreto. Finding the back of the net, just five minutes apart from each other, close to the start of this first, excuse me, of this second half. So we're gonna nominate Barreto for uh, All-Star of the Game probably at this point. I mean, how do you not have him as your oh, uh, man two, of the match? Two great, great hard hit balls clear. Cooper Vitti goes into the middle, tries to find Mannix. His pass goes awry. Wallace brings it down but it's taken away. And now we hear the Exeter student section likely accurately chanting, it's all over. Here's Barreto, he'll settle things down, keep possession, and try to burn time off this clock. It's tipped out of bounds. Wallace earns the throw for the Bulldogs. Kaplow, Back to Wallace, they play it forward. Mirza can't get ahead, but it does find the feet of Johnson on the far side. Yeah, not cleanly played, but, but deflected effectively to uh, get the advantage uh, control, at least possession. Kaplow now Cooper. takes a second and it gets shut down. Coming forward is Cooper Vitti. Well-timed, uh, you know, blocking slide there, slide tackle. Wallace, ball played out of bounds by Keener. Bulldogs with a throw in here. Kaplow with the throw, looks for Rodriguez. It's played back into the defensive end. Here's Hoey tracking it down. Hoey looks for help. Far side, Benjamin. Near side, Tennant. Wallace. Good decision to go to that ball because he had a player coming down on him hard. Vitti was ranging forward for the Blue Hawks and shutting down Tavis Wallace's space, so he had to come back to it strong. Here's Barreto trying to track down a long ball. Hoey does a great job of knocking it out of his possession. Tennant comes all the way back. Forward for Wallace, he'll take space. Nice play by Mr. Hoey. Forward at Keeper's the top of out. the box. Keeper was well out. I'm not sure that was a great decision, but doesn't hurt him. Rodriguez gets onto it. Vinny Rodriguez slips and falls away from the ball. The Blue Hawks take it over and now Tennant back in his defensive end. Referee just took a close look at his watch and he's looking very closely. He's counting down right now, I'm pretty sure. He's got probably 10 seconds left. Some excitement on the Exeter Blue Hawks bench and you can understand why they are ticking down to a state championship here. 2-0 is the score. They lead on two goals by Alan Barreto. Barreto plays one forward looking for Mannix. He tries to squirt through the middle. Luke, excuse me, Logan Tennant is able to chip it away near side. Excuse me, that wasn't Mannix either. That was Keener trying to track that one down. And he this couldn't is quite be get it, onto folks. it. That's it, Exeter. three whistles. And the Exeter Blue Hawks have come into Manchester Memorial High School, the number two seed. Two undefeated teams here. There had to be one winner and one loser. And two marvelous goals by Alan Barreto are the difference makers here today. The Exeter Blue Hawks take the state championship. Some exasperation by the Bedford Bulldogs. Very frustrated they couldn't finish in the final third and your state championship Exeter Blue Hawks will be crowned in just a few minutes. Bill, any thoughts from this game? Well, it, it turned out to be basically exactly what I thought and both coaches said that it's going to probably be scored by a, you know, one or two goals and uh, well played, hard fought, but cleanly played game. Uh, we didn't see any cards, we didn't need any cards. Uh, a highlight for me was that little episode over here after Teixeira went as episode, uh, unsports, the sportsmanlike conduct. And I saw that a couple of the times in the game when some of the players did foul each other and they turned to each other in, in almost like apologies. Uh, I, I'm not going to say that's one of the greatest matches. Uh, Exeter's had a couple games, a couple that I've been, I refereed that I think were better. 
Uh, Bedford, last couple of years, I mean, last year, for crying out loud, they were, you know, their state championship run was one of the best ever. Last two games of the season, you can't beat that. They, they played so beautifully. Tonight, they played well, and they got beat by a team that tonight showed consistent all over the field, defense, offense, goalkeeping. They were the better team. Congratulations to, to them. Of course, both teams are going to graduate quite a few seniors, or so who knows what's going to happen next year, Corey. But everybody's going to move on, and uh, some of our kids I know will be playing in college, Exeter players as well. They're going to continue to play and have further careers. And uh, I'm just going to really quick say thank you to the entire BC TV staff. Uh, it's been a wonderful season. We've had, you know, we come up here, it's easy for us as broadcasters, but we don't have to work all those extra hours regardless of the weather and everything else. And Andrew Fenn, Bill Jennings, thank you. And of course, behind the scenes, I am going to say, Colleen, you do a great job too. Corey, yeah, all yours, buddy. Again, Harry Kozlowski bringing us live on the radio today on WBNH 105.1. We appreciate him producing today. And of course, as you mentioned, all the BCTV crew, we thank you so much for your work and your effort, the setup, the takedown, and bringing us phenomenal action throughout all these Bedford sports. So we'll wrap it up here. Again, the Bulldogs come in undefeated and they leave unfortunately defeated. The Exeter Blue Hawks come in strong. Alan Beretta with two goals here this evening. That's the difference and Exeter wins the Division I Boys State Championship here in 2024. So for Bill Klein, I'm Corey Munster Tiger. Everybody have a great night. With the head coach of Bedford, we come forward to hand out the Ron Hunt medal. We will announce the Bedford High School Bulldogs winner of roster for the year 26. Will the players please come and collect their medals? Number zero, Taylor Skater. Number one, John Kowalski. Number two, Jefferson Dunbar. Number three, Colin Johnson. Number four, Eli Caplow. Number five, Evan Hoey. Number six, Caden Wallace. Number seven, Caden Santuri. Number eight, Gonzalo Benicio Dante Rodriguez. Number ten, Alan Yerstock. Number eleven, Dale Sequoia. Number twelve, James Lee. Number 13, Lucas Turek. Number 14, Yucca Bilecki. Number 15, Logan Juxtel. Number 16, Gavin Lafferty. Number 17, Matthias Jacobson. Number 18, Ethan Benjamin. Number 19, Donald Turek. Number 20, Grayson Howley. Number 21, Ryan Kruger. Number 22, Logan Turek. Number 27, Grayson Kruger. Number 25, Nicholas Harrington, and number 26, Jared McCullough. Number 24, four, three, and one runner-up, the Bedford Bulldogs. The captains of Bedford will step forward to accept the runner-up class. Congratulations to the Bedford Bulldogs on a great season.
Now it's back into the Mohawk, please step forward to accept the championship flag. 